Hey, guys. Uh, so, so when I was a little kid, and, and I have a photo here so you can see what I looked like. Uh, I have really chubby lips. Uh, but when I was a little kid, uh, I always kind of did things differently than everybody else. Like when I was learning my multiplication tables, um, instead of memorizing them like everybody else did, uh, for like 10 times 12, I would do 10 times 10 and then 10 times 2, and I would add them together really quickly in my head, and everybody told me this was the wrong way to do this. And, uh, and throughout my life, I kind of always faced things a little bit differently. I was one of those like weird kids that nobody, I was like, not smart enough to be in the gifted and talented program, but I was kind of just like in this weird place. Uh, so uh, as I grew older, I kind of always wanted to do things my own way. So when I decided I wanted to play guitar for other people, I, uh, instead of you know, trying out and, and doing shows or showcases and things like that, I decided I was just going to rent my own venue and sell tickets to see myself. Uh, <laughs> So that was, that was fun. Uh, and, 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 and as I got older even more, I was in college and I went to art school and I went to Savannah College of Art and Design in Atlanta. And um, I, you know, I, I wanted to create art, but I, I never, I didn't think I was that good. I don't think I ever was going to be a professional artist, but I still wanted to create. And, um, but I really needed a purpose. I never liked to just make art for art's sake. Um, you know, I, I wanted it to be for a show or I needed a deadline or something like that. So, uh, I was kind of um, struggling a little bit with, with this idea of just creating art for art's sake. And I knew that there were other people out there who also kind of felt this way. You know, they weren't going to be professional artists. They weren't going to be um, selling their work to museums or having these big shows. But, but they wanted to be inspired and, and create together. Uh, so uh, I met this guy, Shane. And um, there's a photo of us. Um, we. Uh, <laughs> We looked just like each other. Um, people would confuse us, and I hated that. Uh, I think it's just because we're like bearded, young Jewish men. So, um, but you can see we, we started to look a little bit better later on the right here. Uh, so, so uh, you know, we, we got together and we're like, well, let's create this this gallery space. And um, we didn't really know what we were doing, and somehow we got a lease for this space, and it was ridiculous because they're they're policy was just like bring back your own printed out credit report and, and they'll give you keys to a, to a storefront. So we rented the space, we started this pay for play gallery where people paid a little bit of money and we um, let them put whatever they want up and, and we had to get up really early on a Saturday morning which was horrible for college kids and uh, uh, so we, we started doing this and we weren't really excited about it um, but, but again this idea of, of bringing a community together of people that just wanted to, to create and um, so we came up with this idea for these, these projects. Uh, the first project that we ever did was this project called A Million Little Pictures. And the idea was really simple. We would um, send you a disposable camera. You would you know, sign up to our website. We'd send you the camera. You would take photos on, on a few themes and, and send them back, and, and we would develop the photos. So we created this like extremely primitive website where people would like sign up and we'd get like an email, we'd like copy and paste their address into Excel and like print it out. We were like, didn't know what we were doing. Uh, but you know, we had like 15 people sign up at first and I mean still that was exciting for us because we didn't even know where people had heard about us. So we did this and, and this like took forever to get to that 15 and then one day we woke up in the morning and we had like 75 people that had signed up overnight and we're like, what's going on? And we were roommates at the time and I like ran into his room and he was already on his computer trying to figure out what happened. And uh, it ended up being we were in this Yahoo Daily Wire, which was this really old newsletter that Yahoo did. And they don't do it anymore. But we were one of the last ones that they sent out. And we were like, huh, like, this really is something people are excited about, um, this idea of creating. And, and it, especially at the time when we were just like these two young kids in Atlanta, Georgia, like they're just sending us money via the internet. And we were like, sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> So we, we got the photos developed, and a friend of ours did it. And I think he might have gotten fired for doing all these photos for us at his photo place. But that's besides the point. Uh, so he developed the photos, and, and we, um, we, we literally taped each photo to the wall. And we ended up getting about 150 people that participated, so 15 times you know, 25 exposures. And uh, it, was, it was really awesome. We were, we were so excited that we walked into this, this room, and, and we had created this piece of like artwork, but like from 150 people. And it wasn't just us, it wasn't just one artist, it was all of these people that made this possible. 
And, and kind of what really sold this idea to me was uh, this teacher of mine that I had at SCAD. He had come, and he was one of those teachers that just, you, you could not please him, no matter what you did. And, and I tried a lot, and, and he, he was never really excited about anything I was doing. And uh, he came in, and he gave me that like famous Johnny Carson nod, where like, all right, something, something I'm doing is right. And people showed up to this exhibition, and everyone was really excited. And we're like, all right, great, now what do we do? So at the time, we kept like thinking of, um, of like what else we could send out. Like It was really kind of linear, just like what item can we send to people that they can create with? And this idea of sketchbooks kind of came up. And uh, I had never really kept a sketchbook, and Shane was uh, never left his computer, so he didn't have a sketchbook. And, and we, really, we, we didn't really love the idea, but we had seven days to pay rent. And if you ever want to motivate a college student, you remind them that rent is due in seven days. And uh, <laughs> so we were like, all right, let's just try it. Like we sat there and we like threw together the most like ridiculous website. And I wish I had photos of it because I'm sure it was really bad. I've, I've blocked it out. But uh, we threw it together and we're like, we'll send you a sketchbook. Uh, and, and 500 people start, signed up for this project. And, and, and real quick, the sketchbook project, for, you don't, for those of you who don't know, is an interactive traveling library of artist sketchbooks. Uh, we now have a mobile library, which I'll get to, but it's out back when you guys have a break to go check it out. But um, So we sent these sketchbooks out, and what we started to realize was that, one, we had more people outside of Georgia than we had in Georgia signing up. And to us, that like blew our mind. And, and the coolest part was when we started getting emails from people who like lived in the United Kingdom, and they were like, can I sign up? Or we're like, sure, Like we have no idea how to do that. but whatever, and, and this is a, a lot of Shane and I's relationship was like, hey Shane, I have this idea, you're gonna code it out on our website, and I'd like stand over his shoulder until he was done. Uh, so that's, that's how things continued to progress. So we did this for a couple years, and um, uh, we eventually kind of got to this point where we're like, again, more people out of Georgia were doing this than people in Georgia, so what are we gonna do? Like, just like everything else in my life, I'm like, I'm gonna go on a traveling exhibition and make this happen. I remember telling my father this, and, and he, he again wasn't really that excited about this. But so we, we loaded up Shane's two-door Honda Civic with all of these sketchbooks. And so somehow I thought the idea of a, a really good-looking exhibition was U-Haul uh, boxes painted white. I, I'm sure you, you know this is you learned that in, in exhibition design. Um, I put these light bulbs in the top, which you can see. And the funny thing, it's not in this photo, but we, we used to have dandelions all over the place. I don't know where that came from, but I was really into the dandelion at the time. So, uh, so this is what, what it would look like. And this was great, and we, we kept having 500 people sign up, and that's where we maxed it out. Uh, and so we kind of had this one realization one day. It was like, let's not max it out. Like, let's see what happens if we just let people sign up. Uh, and so this was the first year that we were traveling, and we ended up getting 2,500 people to sign up for the project. Again, like, mind blown had no idea people would be this into it. Uh, so we kept doing this for a couple years. And um, what ended up happening was uh, people would show up to the exhibition and say, you know, I want to see my book, or I want to see my cousin's book. And we'd be like, find it. Dig through the pile. <laughs> I'm sure it's there. Uh, like, literally, we would like hide in the corner. and like. like uh, so um, that didn't work too well. Um, the year after the 2,500 people signed up, we had, we had 3,700 people sign up. So it was growing, and we, we kind of, we've always had this like, necessity to grow because the project grew fast. And so we were sitting at a restaurant in, in Chicago one night after an exhibition, and, and I went to Shane with one of those like, you know, crazy moments where I'm like, wouldn't it be amazing if we had this library of sketchbooks? And it was like, yeah, whatever, that would be cool. And then like 10 minutes later, I think we both were just like, actually, we could do this. Like We could create a library of sketchbooks. Um, Shane was always really ambitious with what he could build on the internet, and I was really ambitious with what Shane could build on the internet. Um, <laughs> so we set out to build a, a library system, and, and everything we do is in-house. We, we built uh, you know, everything from the, the checkout system to our kiosk system and, and, and everything in between. Um, so uh, th that was the same year, 2009, that we decided to move up to Brooklyn from, from Atlanta. And, 
Uh, moving to Brooklyn changed our lives. Uh, we went from 3,700 people signing up to the project for, to 28,000 people signing up for the project in just one year's time. Uh, we also went from this to this. Uh, this is what our space in New York looks like. It is, this is just one side of the space. Uh, we have currently have 26,700 something sketchbooks in our collection. Um, here's kind of another view to give you an idea. Um, but, but this project has just kind of grown immensely. Uh, so of course the natural next step was to build a mobile library. It was again one of those crazy days where we're like, let's build a mobile library. And uh, I wish I had a photo of this, but we, um, at first we were gonna build a house on wheels. You know, that, that's the thing people do. We were gonna sleep in it, it was great. And then, and then we, 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 didn't, we stopped drinking coffee and <laughs> got a little bit back. And so we built this mobile library and uh, it, it kind of works like a food truck, but with, instead of tacos, you get sketchbooks. Um, so here's a couple shots too. Uh, so, so now we have this ability to travel all over the country. And in the past we had gone to these like really big major cities. Um, but now we're, we're finding ourselves going to smaller cities. And, and it's really exciting because now, like this uh, fall, we're going to Rapid City, South Dakota, uh, really random. And um, my uncle the, works there, so that was kind of how we picked it. But uh, they're like shutting the city down for us. It's like, the, it's, it's really cool. Because in New York, we're one of like 8 million things that are going on right now. But in, in South Dakota, we're like the w one of one. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, we're really excited about the year to come. And, and I think the cool thing about this project is that it's not an artist sitting alone in the studio. And, and though you, you create the work alone or you know, with a small group, there are people all over the world. We've had uh, over 135 different countries participate, six out of seven continents. We haven't gotten someone from Antarctica yet. If you know anyone, please tweet at them. And uh, so just really quickly, 26,725 sketchbooks are in our collection. Uh, we have 962,000 pages of artwork. Uh, we we have, have had 94,000 checkouts. And, I believe about 35, 40,000 of them have been all in our Brooklyn space. Uh, 45,000 library cards have been issued all over the world. 66,000 artists have participated. Um, and then another really cool aspect of it was, was we, were, we wanted to build a digital library a couple years ago. So we put together this, this thing and it, we, built, we bought like this ridiculous uh, book digitizer and uh, we, have, we have someone that works for us that can now digitize over 225 books a day. She's like, She's a human, but she's a machine at the same time. Uh, but she uses a machine. Uh, but we now have um, uh, 13,000 sketchbooks that are digitized on our digital library. Uh, and so we have had 1.6 million books viewed on our digital library. And this isn't page views. This is literally someone loading a book and flipping through it. Uh, so th it's just like, it's incredibly exciting for us. Um, so I really wanted to quickly talk about this idea of the community versus the singular artist. Because I, I truly believe what makes the Sketchbook Project really special is the fact that there are people all over the world doing this together. It's, it's not, like you could be sitting in your studio in Richmond and know that somebody in Cambodia is working on their sketchbook at the exact same time as you. And to me, that's like what really inspires me to keep going. Uh, you know, one in particular story that, that I love uh, about the project is uh, we set up a pop-up shop in Oakland, California last year, um, and we were there for about three weeks, my wife and I, and uh, the, every day these, these family members of this guy would come in and they would look for his book. We just like kept it out because they just kept coming for it. And, and, they, and they, were, they would cry, and it was this like really emotional experience. So we finally took the time to like look through the book, and we realized that this book was this like legacy of his father dying and, and his whole life and um, it was this amazing like touching story and and she's gonna be really embarrassed my wife all the time so she cries at least like one exhibition a year because this, these uh, stories are so touching but every day this family would come in and read this book together I don't know why they couldn't come on the same day but they like really spread it out uh, and they would come in and but it was just this amazing experience to watch these people read this and to connect and to be inspired by, by this, this man that he was, the book was made about, but also the artist that made it. Um, and and, and that, that to us is really exciting. And so what I really um, love about, about my story and about the project is 
I was this printmaker who grew up in New Jersey. Shane was this graphic designer, computer genius who grew up in South Florida. And somehow we found each other in Atlanta and we created this amazing thing together. And I think in this world of Instagram and Facebook, like, yeah, I can look at Instagram and be inspired by the crap that my friend just shot on the floor and like made some silly comment about. But what is really missing right now is this like human connection. And so I love that we have this digital side and then you can come to an exhibition and you can hold this physical object and we don't make you wear gloves and, and it, it's really just uh, informal and, and fun. Uh, but I, I just encourage everyone, kind of like Andy did in the beginning, is to just meet people and, and connect and go beyond social boundaries to make something amazing. Like scientists should work with painters and, and printmakers should work with sculptors and, and, and if all of these people come together and create, then I really believe that amazing things would, would, would come out of this. So, uh, so thanks so much. Thank you, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, I love the fact that Steven and Sarah live by a very disciplined business plan. I mean, it's a strict, I mean, it's amazingly oh, yeah, yeah. orchestrated. It's the feel, right? You felt your way through it all. Everything we've done was, was, was made from kind of this like need, like the business grew and you, you just found a way to make it work. So the one question I have for you is, what's the greatest kind of effect this has had on you and maybe Sarah as a couple, or as you kind of think about the big effect of it, like what's it had on you? Uh, I mean, we've had this amazing, this amazing experience. We've been doing it since 2006. And, and I think what's so amazing about it is that people don't just use it to sketch in a book and send it back to us. Yeah. And, and, and people always say to us, like, How, oh, I can't do it. I'm not an artist. And we're like, but that's, like, not the point at all. You know, completely the point is just to, if you have some sort of tiny creative bug inside of you, this is a way to have a deadline and to inspire yourself and to know that other people around the world are having the same struggle to finish this book together. And we've just met some amazing people, and, and it's just such a great experience. That's killer. So as I ask you guys to thank Stephen, Sarah, stand up. The <laughs> lovely partner in crime.